because that one I decided we do together, and it's not on the answer key. read some of these. We did this together so you can look at the video for these numbers here, but this is the work. And of course, at the end, we decided, I didn't write it down, but we decided we did not find enough evidence to say that these don't follow this pattern. Okay, because we just didn't make it far enough away. So it, it, it's zero would mean that these are exactly what I expected. So the further away from zero I get, the further these are from what I expected. So if I get at least this far, that's evidence that the whole population does not follow this. We didn't make it far enough away. We're too close to zero. So we can't say that the, it doesn't follow that pattern. Okay. So what I want to do right now is I want us to do this problem here, number five. And if you need to borrow a calculator, I got some up here. Anyone else need a copy of the practice final? What I want you guys to do right now is try to do number five in the practice final. I didn't put it on the answer key because I was lazy, so we're going to do it together. 5A. Get the data in there and then I'll catch up with you. Um, I try to do like this. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Part A wants you to figure out the 99% confidence interval for the true mean weight. So when people do this, they always do the exact same mistake. Um, with, where are the weights? On the list. They're in list two, yes? So when you do, how do I calculate what I need? to get the confidence and what do I need to construct a confidence interval? What do I need to calculate? 
Say again? Okay, we do need a z score eventually. Maybe. Or a t. I don't know yet. Where are we going to get this standard deviation from? Where are we going to get the mean from? Yeah, one verse x. But when you go to do, let me just make sure everybody's with me. If I give you a list of data and you have to get the mean and the standard deviation, don't just, uh, you don't have to do it by hand anymore like we did back in chapter two. After that first test, I said we're not going to use that. You just do one more step. The, the trick is you better make sure you pick the right list, right? So right now I've got list three for some reason. So I'm going to make that list two. That's all with me. Okay. So then I know that uh, x bar is 75. I know s, right, because this is a sample, is 59.167. n is 9. Now n is, is n big enough? But what saves me? Why is n not big enough? What would it have to be? Bigger than three. So what saves me? Assuming it's yeah, speed. we're assuming it's normal. Yeah. And generally, probably shouldn't do that, but I told you you can. In fact, I said it twice. I love it. Um, so what, which confidence interval formula I'm going to use? There's three of them, right? I'm definitely not going to use the one with P hat stuff. This is not percentages. So which of the first two am I going to use? The T one, because I only know S. I don't know this population standard deviation. Are you guys? That's one of the biggest misunderstandings. And, and, and unfortunately, some SAS teachers don't teach this or something. But T scores were invented for the situations where we only know the sample standard deviation. That's why they were created. So, of course, that's what. And of course, I told you guys that the, the two formulas are notes. You're not allowed to have notes on your formula sheet, but the formulas are notes. X bar plus minus Z sigma, X bar plus minus TS. So I know what goes with what. So, can you guys take a minute? Don't say anything. Look up the T score for this situation. What's alpha? 0.01. Yeah, 0.01. How many tails since it's a confidence interval? Two. So just take a minute. You need one more thing, and then you can look up the T-score. Yeah. Yeah, so you got 0.01, two tails, so that tells me which column to look at, and then they just stop at eight. Can you say it one more time, Sophia? 3.325. 325? No, five, instead of two. 3.355. Five, five, okay. Just crowdsourcing now. Did you guys, anybody verify that? Okay. Yes? Okay, let me see. So, no, alpha. Oh, sorry. Oh, you didn't get these? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I left the one out. Yeah, I got the mean was 100. That was fine. But you still didn't, you didn't get the, did anybody else not get these? I might have, let me see. Let me make sure I got everything there right. 22, yeah. I was going to say. I love you guys. That's a really good example of just, that's the quickest check you can do. Um, is just make sure that everybody's got three decimal. I'm really sure that there's nobody in here that's 22 times. Um, so stat, cal, let me do this again. All right. Yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is start fresh. 
Alright. Um, much better. Okay. So X bar 186.11. You guys, I, I don't know if you guys are used to teachers in the past just telling you. I've had math teachers that said to us, you know, I don't make mistakes. And my God, I am so human, it's crazy. So if you see a mistake on me, just say it, it's okay. Yeah. Um, where am I at? Do, 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 do. N is nine, degrees of freedom is eight, blah, blah, blah. So T is still gonna be 3.355, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that look more like what everybody else? Yeah. So thank you, David. Um, okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging and chugging into the formula. Um, let's see if I can plug. Yes. Okay. So I've got all that information, and I know I'm going to use this thing here. And then you just have to plug and chug. As always, I ask you, it's a good idea to do the error first. Makes it a little bit easier. So we get the error is 17.42 something. So again, We've seen multiple times on a test where I just give you a list of data. So you want to plug that stuff in the list and just calculate what you need, right? And in that case, you almost are certainly going to use t-scores because you're calculating your own standard deviation from the sample I gave. So it's almost definitely going to be a t-score you use. So we're doing number five on a practice final, just because I didn't put it on the And then you can do, I'm going to do what I always do. So I store that in X, and then I do, in my case it's T because I'm special, 196.11 minus that, 196.11 plus that. So I get 178.63 up to 213.59, blah, 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 blah. But it's okay, All right? But what would the statement be here that we would make? We are ninety-nine percent confident. confident that the interval, the interval we just made, one seventy-eight point six three pounds to two thirteen point five nine pounds does what? mean weight. Of men. I'm be honest, it's men near Bronx Pizza, but what? Anybody know Bronx Pizza down there in Hillcrest? No? Okay. I used to be, I was one of these points to be honest. I lived way too close and the pizza tasted way too good. So we ate a lot of them. Um so again, just to remind you guys, this is not on the answer key. That's why I wanted to do this with you. So that's part A. Part A is just this, uh, this confidence level. And then go ahead and try to do the, try to get this stuff here. Try to do the correlation analysis.
So I didn't put it here. I will put it on the test. So R has to be greater than, I'm sorry, R is less than negative 0.622. Show correlation. So remind me, how do I get the line of best fit and the correlation, the R? How do I get those things? Where do I go? Count. Count. Okay, number four, I like it. Make sure it says L1, L2. I mean, what's your immediate reaction to that R? Um, pretty strong. Pretty strong. So when I say, uh, I will say interpret R, so that means it's a strong negative correlation. But here's what this means. If I ask you what does it tell us about the line of best fit, there's a few ways you can answer the question. The fact that it's a strong correlation, what does that mean about the line versus the data points? The data points are generally pretty close. Yeah. The, the data points are really close. They're tight to the line, right? That's one way you can say it. You can say that uh, since there's a really strong correlation, the data points will lie really close to the line. Or you can say, we will trust the line to make predictions. Either one of those. Or you can say both. What the hell? Overload. Um, uh, uh, data points are close to the line. Or you can say, uh, we trust the line to make predictions. What do I mean by make predictions? Well, I say, okay, I just moved five miles away from Bronx Pizza. And after living here for a while, can you tell me what my weight's gonna be, right? This is obviously, I made this shit up. <laughs> no reason. But anyway, I just thought it was funny because uh, I got really, really fat for a while. It's great. Um, Oh, so part D, there you go. I forgot I had a part D. Predict the weight for someone who lives half a mile away from Bronx Pizza. So how would you do that? Do we have a way to do that? We have the equation. Yeah, we have the equation. Crazy. What does X represent in the equation? How many miles? Miles, because that's like an XY table. That's all it is, is like an XY table. So if you just put 0.5 in the equation, Seventeen point one four five. Is that right? Two hundred seventeen pounds. Seventeen seventeen point four one five. Yeah, there you Of course, just like on a quiz, on the final exam, you would come up and show me your scatter plot and your line of emphasis. So let's get those going. Uh, here's something I didn't show you, and you do not have to do this. So let me just show you, just show you. When you do this here, you see here where it says store. This means store regression equation. And again, you don't have to do this, but I just want to show you. Um, See where it says vars right there, variables? If I go to y variables, function y1. If I put a y1 there, look what it does for me. So it's all the same, calculate it, but it put it into y equals, oh shit, of course I'm in a different mode. Hold on. It put into y equals the, the line of best fit. Like stupid number of decimal places, right? And who cares? Who really cares? I just wanna show you. You can just put it in yourself, not a big deal. But if I hit graph right now, why am I seeing that? I'm not seeing what I want to see. It's because it's zoom. If I hit zoom, which one? Uh, nine. Yeah, zoom stat. Wherever that is on your calculator, it'll find, well shit, of course on this calculator, 
my poor little thing. My stat plot is not turned on. Ah, yeah, there I go. Now I'm at zoom nine. Kabam. So please, dear God, on the day of the final, if you're having issues with the calculator, it's not showing stuff, it's whatever, just go up and show it to me. There's maybe something not, like I just did right now. There's probably something not selected, or you have a Zoom drive or something. Right? Or you have a data point that's really freaky. So if I, if I go back, well, um, where am I, here? No, I can't do that. Well, maybe so. I make this a 22 again. All right, that looks really, look at that. I mean, so visually I can catch something that I put in there pretty, pretty wrong. Yeah, oh, okay, hang on. There's a lot of checks and balances here, but you always got me. Okay, so this is what I would need to see. And real quick, um, so what that line is trying to do is to graphically average all the points. Do you see how all the points above the line, they're, there's quite a, there's a few more points above the line, but they're closer than the ones below the line. So that's kind of like what it's trying to do, it's trying to average where all the points are. That's its job. Um, it's got a few other names. The, the, its real technical name is the least squares line, because it tries to minimize the square distance away from itself to every point, but let's just call it the line of best fit. That's the quick way to reference it. Okay. Um, now, if you weren't here last time, you should probably watch the video for, um, so you can make your formula sheets if you need to. Um, but now it's, I'm going to just open it wide up to any thing you want to look at, any old tests, any old homework, anything from the practice final, um, any, anything that's still not clear that you just want to clear up, any questions. It's just wide, wide open. It's the last day of class. And then we have our final next week. And I always have students that ask me, do we meet for class next week? Well, no, no, next week is just finals. We have our final on Tuesday, and then you don't have to meet anymore. We're all done. Yeah. So if there's like a problem you see on the practice final that you don't remember how to do, or you want to do another example of chi square maybe or something? Um, number three. Number three? Okay. So if you have your formula sheet sitting next to you, you kind of know where to look when you get this, right? There's formulas that have the x and the t of x in them. Um, but what is this first part, part A? What does it take to be a valid probability? What, what do all the probabilities have to do? They have to add up to pretty much one. Yeah, they have to add up close to one. So if they don't add up perfectly to one, you still have to say the sum of p of x equals 0.999, which is close to one. Okay, and what's the other thing that they have to do? Uh, no probabilities can be negative. That's True. Zero, right? So they have to be between zero and one. one. Cool. And these, do they add up to be one? Is there a shortcut to part B? I want the probability that I get something more than three. One minus three. Yeah, so I want everything except three. So since all the probabilities add up to one, what are the ones add up to that aren't three? One minus 0.11, that's the only thing I'm leaving out. Or you could just add up four, five, six, seven, those probabilities, either way you do it. What do you get? 0.89 for gas, or you can write 89% either way.
Now let's do this. You guys do part C. What formulas are you using? What's the formula for the mean? You guys have that? You guys have your formal sheets out? Yeah, what's row three going to be? Yeah, x times p of x. So the mean is going to be summing up all those numbers. So I have to make them first, and then I can add them up. What's this next column going to be? You guys remember? And again, if you find the formula, you know what that column's got to be. So the formula for the standard deviation is going to be the square root. So I need a bunch of x squared p of x's so that I can add them up. And again, I know it's been a while, but I showed you where those formulas came from. I showed you why they make sense. This one I had to do a little bit of algebra to get to, right? This one I kind of tried to show you how it is built on how we already know to calculate the mean. So you can do all this in the, in the calculator. So this will be uh, L1, L2. This one is X is L1, P of X is L2, so L1 times L2. And this one I just do L1 times L3. Or you can do L1 squared times L2. They all come out to the same. It's all the same math. You guys get those numbers? Real quick, let me ask you this. Uh, what's the heaviest weighted data point? What's the data point? Yeah, seven. 50% of the data is sevens. Right now, you can answer that last question I asked. Right now, is this normally distributed? Yeah, aren't these all almost the same right here? So it's going to look like this. And then all of a sudden, it's seven is going to go whack. <laughs> so that's not normal. Normal should have the highest peak in the middle, correct? This one's got like flat, and then it goes whack <laughs> for the last one. That data is not normal. And can somebody tell me what the average of three, four, five, six, seven is? Five. Five, right, right in the middle. The average of this data, though, will it be more or less than five? Much more. Mu will it be more? It yeah, because seven. that's going to kind of drag it up a bit. It's like a gravitational pull. It's going to pull it up a bit. Yeah. So, real quick, uh, let me see. Again, I'm going to show you something. So, you could do, remember, we could go to list, and we could go to math, and we could go to sum. And we go, oh, and we go, so oh, okay. It's not that bad, to be honest. I'm just playing it up like a, like a, like a uh, infomercial. Um, real, and you don't have to do this. If I do two bar stats on list one and list two, it'll tell me the, not list one, list two better. If I do two bar stats on list three and list four, part of what it tells me is the sum and the sum. You don't have to do that. just want to show you in case you were curious. All the other stuff doesn't mean anything to me. I just want the sums. Or again, you see that's 5.77? Or instead you could go list, math, sum, L3, 
And the nice thing is you can just hit second enter and make, replace this with L4. What does this represent? What does that number right there represent? What did we do to get this number? We added up everything here, right? So this number is the sum of the x squared p of x. I'm desperately trying to show you. Um, I mean, we derived the equation way back when. You get these numbers. And once you have some connection to what the hell you just did, I added those up. That's what that is. So that, wherever I see it, I can just put a 35.41 there. And what's the mean, of course? 5.77, because that's what I get when I add up the x, p of x's. So that'll be 5.77 there, right? Try to put that in your calculator. I think you get the same thing. What do you guys get for that? Anybody? I get 1.455. That is the center, and there's the spread. Okay. Um, part B. So we already answered the question about the normal. It ain't normal at all. Holy crap, it's got the highest bar at the end. Uh, do you guys remember how to do this within one standard deviation of the mean? All right, so way back when, that's what we did through the line. We just put the mean in the middle. Go down. I'll try to do part B. Yeah, so, you know, again, just to reiterate, on the day of the test, if your calculator gives you some weird error, just come up and see me if you can't figure out what the problem is. Sometimes it's just to use the wrong negative sign. Right? There's a minus sign, there's a negative sign. Sometimes it's a little bit weird. Uh, so to draw this, you don't have to draw it, but it's, it's not a bad idea. 5.77. If I go down one standard deviation, where do I end up? To go down one of these, four point three three one five three one five, and then if I go up one step, over seven seven point two two seven eight. Now, this was the precursor to confidence intervals because. Confidence intervals go up and down a certain number depending on how confident I want to be, right? Now here we just went up and down one step. How many data points did we actually just catch? Or not how many, but which data points did we just catch? Five, six, seven. Yeah, we caught five, six, seven. So then what percentage of the data did I guess just catch? Do I do um what's wrong with doing this? Okay, I caught five, that's three out of five. I caught three out of five. Yeah, they're not all equally weighted. I caught all the fives, that's 13, that, I'm sorry, 12%. I caught all the sixes, that's 13%. And I caught all the sevens, which is 50%. So 75%. So 75, yeah. Now another way to answer the question, might the data be normal? You could say, well, it doesn't look like it, because what's, what's supposed to be within one standard deviation? 
What's your memory burn month? You guys remember that number? The board. If I go up and down one standard deviation, what percentage am I supposed to catch? 60 something. 60 something? 67, 63, 8, 68. 68%, okay. So maybe don't answer it that way. Uh, you can answer it the other way we just did earlier. But yeah, that's 75%, which is more than we would think. Um, but yeah, it's, you could tell already it's not normal just because of the distribution. The highest peak is not in the middle. Okay. So, the biggest problem in all of mathematics, the single biggest issue students have in all of mathematics is, okay, I know how to do that, I just don't know when to do that. So in statistics, it's all about figuring out what kind of problem is it. So these are just in your face. There's an X, there's a P of X. Okay, I know exactly which formulas I'm gonna use. The formulas tell me what I need to do. What about the next problem? What kind of problem is number four? It's uh, PQ. Yeah, it's NPQ. I've got 35 people. I've got a probability of success. And I got a, and I wouldn't call this a success, but you know, again, uh, and I got a probability of failure. Success doesn't have to be a happy thing or a rational thing. Um, and I know this is back from 2009. I don't care. It's just a practice final. Um, yeah, so, so you, when you see like 11% uh, of people or 28% of this does it, you kind of look around and see, okay, do I see an N? Do I see. Uh, is it is it they do this or they don't do this? All right, that sounds like a binomial, two situations. Um, so then you can look at the right chunk of formulas on your formal sheet, right? Um, yeah. What about? That one's pretty straightforward, right? But just to let you know, on the practice final, I was a little extra evil, but on the actual final, I will have A, what's the claim, set up your hypothesis, B, do you use Z or T score, C, set up the rejection, right? I'll have all the steps up here on my ass, because it's the practice final, you can look at your notes. Um, but on the actual final, I have this, the steps. How many other hypothesis tests are there on this practice one? This is a hypothesis. What other one is a hypothesis test? Nine. Yeah, nine's hypothesis test. Nine. That's a hypothesis test. Yeah. Holy shit. Now, on the actual final, I can't have three hypothesis tests because they take a while to do, right? So I'm not going to have three hypothesis tests. But again, practice final. Ah, I can make whatever I want to now. And will you guys, uh, let's see if on the, oh, can, can we try to get everybody get this one right on the final? Uh, what does a z-score of 2.14 mean, just by itself? Yeah, so don't say how many, say the data point is 2.14, standard deviations, away from the mean. And even better would be above the mean, but away from the mean is good. I know it's above because it's positive, right? Now, I'm, I'm going to ask this question. I'm not going to, it's not going to be 2.4, but I mean, it's the same question. Um, and again, why do I keep doing that? Because Z scores are throughout the entire course. They are the bedrock of statistics. Statistics very often comes down to how far away is something. That, that goodness of fit. How far away is what we saw compared to what we expected to see? Right? In um, just a normal, like, like this problem. Number one about the coffee. The probabilities are related to how far away and what side of the mean I'm on. Right? So that's what a z-score does, is it tells me how many standard deviations and which direction do I go. Number two is pretty straightforward, right? And again, I think I told you last time, more than likely I'll have a 
uh, one of those table problems, right? But I could have one like this. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. guys the answer key haven't tried the practice final, don't even look at this thing. Um, I weird on here? I don't think so. Yeah, number five we did earlier. Number 11 we did yesterday. I know it says one, that's just a print on the next one. Um, feel like I should give you a t-shirt. I took statistics and made it to the final exam. Um, so it's still open. I mean, just anything you guys want to talk about, but on the, on the final exam, the final exam is going to be Tuesday in the morning. It starts after our normal start time. I can't remember off the top of my head what time it starts. Um, is it 9.35 or 9.25? I can't remember. Um, I'm going to bring some, some snacks for myself. No, I mean, I'm going to share them <laughs> with you guys. And uh, I'll have the spreadsheet up here on the computer. So if there's any mistakes, you can correct that. Just correct it right in, right in, the, um, right in the computer. So you guys got your grade sheet summaries, most of you. Um, so if anything looks wrong, just let me know. Um, yeah. And okay. I think everybody got their stuff. Oh, yeah. we have one thing. Can't remember now. So if you got homework back from me and it doesn't have anything written on it, I just assumed it was good. I really just tried to grade. The homework that was given to me before the day of the review and the homework for people that made the lower grades on the tests. You guys are very nice this semester and said, I don't want Jeff to be overworked, so a lot of you guys just didn't give me homework. Yeah, we appreciate that. Oh, geez, Jeff, that's tax um, <laughs> uh, Yeah. So I always tell my students, you make homework your own. Do as much as you can. I, like I said, I, was, I had three jobs in college and I just did as much homework as I could just to get ready for the test, so I totally understand. Um, but, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself and your odds, so you still can turn in, if you never turned in chapter one homework, you can still turn it in on the day of the final, right? Um, why do I, and, and I'm not going to give you full credit, but you're going to get more than zero, right? Uh, why do I do that? Because the final's cumulative. Anything you do now, any corrections you make, any homework you do that you haven't done yet, any of that stuff, it's going to get you met, better prepared for the final. So I want you to be motivated to do that. Oh, and did I tell you guys, let me see. If you've been to Canvas recently, I don't remember if I showed you this. I'm not sure if I remember my password. go. I've got my final exam week office hours. Now, us, for this class, our final exam week is over pretty quickly. We're the, one of the first, I think it's one final Italian before us. So 
So I'll be in the Mass Study Center for an hour, then I'll be in this classroom before the final starts, and then we'll take the final. And then I'm in the Mass Study Center for a bit afterwards if you want to come by and like, I don't know, uh, turn stuff in. I really need it given to me, but if you, know, if you need to, you can get it together, you can bring it to me, and then I'm back in the next day. But uh, after the final, you could just shoot me an email saying, hey, Jeff, when you get a minute, let me know how I came out in the class. And as soon as I get it graded, I'll reply. So don't feel like, I don't want to email him. He's not, no, just e email me and I'll come back to it when I'm done, right? Uh, if you don't want to wait for the grades to hit self-service. Um, so just to give you a priority list, uh, if I were you, if there's any tests you haven't corrected, that would be my first priority. Then uh, maybe I would look at the practice final if I haven't done that yet. Then I would do quiz corrections, and then I would do homework stuff. Any homework you haven't done, any corrections you haven't made, so that would be my list of priorities. Because the one thing I don't tell my class too early in the semester is, I do not let homework fail you. If I calculate your grade, and I don't include the homework grade, and you passed, and then when I put the homework grade in, you fail, you pass. I don't let homework fail you. Does that make sense? So if I put all of a sudden you get a 70, and then I put the homework grade and it becomes a 66, you pass. Because you showed me on the test and such that you got the idea. Maybe? No? Okay. And then also don't forget the fact that I do something really strange. I don't know if you guys really understand why I do it, but remember how the test average is 50 or 55%? You guys remember that? Yeah. So once you take the final exam, whatever of these three groups of things is the lowest, I count it for less. So if you really bomb the final, I'm gonna count it for 20, I'm gonna count your test for 55, and I'm gonna count all this for 25. Does that make sense? So whatever the lowest average out of those three groups, I count it for the 5% less, and I count the other two for the 5% more. I think I told you guys why I did that, because uh, it's a little bit arbitrary what I count each group. So I, I thought to myself one semester, if I pick one way to do it, and somebody would have passed if I would have picked the other way to do it, that seems mean. So I just do it different ways and see whichever is the highest. And I will do one thing for the quiz six. So remember how if you make corrections to quizzes and you do better on the next test, your quiz grade can go up again? So if you make corrections to quiz six and you do better on the final, I'll have your quiz six grade go up. Now quiz six average was pretty damn good, but still, I want you to get the same benefit as every other quiz. Problem and I want the probability formula for that. 
So which formula is that? Yeah, it's got n p's and q's, but it's a probability formula. Which formula is that? The probability of x equals something. Yeah. So I, I want to use n 35 choose 4, right? Mm -hmm. So that means I have four successes, and I have how many failures then? 31. 31. Now, I sometimes get people tell me the answer to this is like 1.69. If you get 1.69, can anyone um, just, what's the immediate problem with that? That means we'll lose about 169% chance. 169% chance. What, what the hell does that mean? I'm going to win that game so hard that people around me are going to win too or something, right? I don't know what the hell that means. So um, that normally means you did not make these decimals. And what the calculator is really telling you is 1.69 E4, so it's some huge crazy number. Um, so let's see if we can all put that in the calculator. Let's see if we can all get that answer. Let's see if we all remember how to get that C name. out. You guys get a number. Okay. Yeah. That was a bad history lesson. But 35 choose 4. How did it get that choose? What did I go to? 35? How did it get that big ass C? No idea. No idea. Okay. Just go ahead and calculate it. Put a C. No, I'm sure. Uh, math. Math. I love it. Um, let's see. What kind of problem is this? This is a probability problem, right? Gotcha. And then there's my choose. 35 choose 4. you got to remember, hit the over arrow to come back up. Once you have the old calculator times 0.09 to the fourth times 0.91. I don't know why I put that in. you got to hit over there. Or I hit the over button to the 31. Bam. 1846. Well, I got some of the gold rushers out there. So. so, part B, what changes in part B? The success line? Yeah, the end. And I'm, I'm not asking a probability question. Now I'm asking about the mean and the standard deviation for this. So it kind of makes sense. If I picked 512 Californians, how many, what percentage of them would I expect to uh, hate kids? Nine percent. <laughs> huh? Nine percent. of them. That's why it makes sense. The formula is the mean is n times p. That percentage of the number. All right, so those are the two best formulas we had the whole semester for the mean and the standard deviation. NP and then square root of NPQ. Kicks so much ass. And then what does this mean? Um, like How far do I, this is back in the day when we had just one definition of unusual. Yeah, you go up and down two steps. Which now, looking back, it feels like we're making a confidence interval, which is really what this is kind of about. Space in the back, so oops.
You guys all good with number two? Part D real quick. I mean, every single one, A, B, and C. For A, B, and C, what's the denominator going to be? Because I have six total pieces of paper. For part D, I'm actually given information. So I can, for part D, I know it was a green piece of paper. So now how many pieces of paper am I talking about total? Three. Three. There's three pieces of green paper. And out of those three pieces of green paper, there are two that have even numbers on them. So there'll be two out of three. So the only time the denominator changes from the total that I was given is if I'm given information, right? If I know more, I can throw some people out or some things. Everybody get the pi square table. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you guys could work on um with six corrections if you wanted to get some help with that. You can work on some problems in the practice final if you want to do that. Um, if at some point you feel like you've gotten what you can, <laughs> then you could you could head out. That's fine. Um, I just want to make sure this is productive time. So for this kind of problem, if you put in L1 is your list of data, and then L2 is my frequency list. These are like relative frequencies here. So let's see if we get anything that looks familiar. 5.77, 1.455, right? This N, it says one, and that's because it's adding up the probability. Yeah, is that a good piece? So would that work even if, whether it's a frequency or a relative frequency? If it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a, if it's a pure frequency, then N will be, like if you had 65, yeah, then N will be 65, yeah. Uh, you said that, um, you said that um, population, what do you For mean? which one? Number six, you said it's like a population? Yeah. Oh, um, I don't, how can I tell if it was a population? Because I thought it was a T. Oh, okay. That standard deviation that they gave us, did it come from a sample? No. Nope. 
So that's the population. So if I say all stat students, or in this case historically, it's assumed that the actual mean is 1.43, and that the actual population standard deviation is 0.25. Okay. It did not come from the sample we took, so it's oh, a population okay. standard deviation. So on the test, I'll be a little more, just a little more straightforward. This one was a little bit hidden, I agree. How many guys, by the way, how many guys, anybody have two finals on, the, on one day? Any of you guys have three finals on one day? Oh, yeah, that, that has I happened. Had two, I've had three finals that I gave in one day. And then, uh, I was so wiped out. Um, and I ate way too many cookies. I brought some cookies for people. And I was just chowing down on them myself. I'm like, nobody wants them. Um, so, you know, this semester I've tried, I, I know, I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of details, there's a lot of nuts and bolts, there's a lot of different formulas. And the thing I warned you about statistics from the very beginning is it's a concept-heavy class. It's, a, it's different from algebra. I mean, algebra has concepts, but it's mostly just mechanical stuff, calculation and manipulation of variables. Statistics has got, it's, it's definitely got formulas, it's got Greek variables, but it's really built on ideas. In fact, the idea tells me which formula to use when. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of the earliest, more conceptual math classes um, that you could take. What does that mean for you? Well, <laughs> it means the more you understand the idea behind something, the more you'll do the right thing at the right time, the more you'll use the right formula at the right time. Um, for some reason, I see people, when I have a hypothesis test, I see them constructing confidence intervals. Right? I'm not sure why. So the only time you're going to use one of those plus or minus formulas is if I actually ask you to make a confidence in it. Right? What was the other way I could give you the expected stuff for a goodness of fit test? I could either give you the percentage breakdown or I could say what? What's the other thing? Like the one with the M&M. &M. How many there are of each time? Yeah, it didn't even tell you that directly. I had to calculate it, but I could say we expect to be uniformly distributed. So if I have 80 things in eight categories, and, I, and I'm saying, we want to say if it's uniform, then I would take 80 divided by eight, each category gets 10. That's the expected. That would be uniform. Everybody gets the same amount, right? So I could either give you the percentage where you calculate the, ex, the expected, or I could just tell you uniform, in which case you give everybody the exact same amount.
answer to the quiz questions. Like um, one C where it says where what does this R tell us about the line for the data? Oh yeah. That's why I can just say um, we trust the line to make predictions. Yeah. If the R is big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can say you trust the line to make predictions, or you could say the data point should lie close to the line. Yeah. Either one of those. So you know you get R point five two, then you're like. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if I trust this line, you know, they're, they're going to be kind of spread out. But, uh. I do have a question. Yeah. So if you, if I'm still okay to take the test out of the do you want me to do that like warning? Oh yeah, was, so one thing I was going to say was if there's anything you haven't taken yeah. as a test or quiz at this point and you don't have something set up with me to do it, then I'm just going to come to the final and place it there and see. Okay. Yeah. So the finals are going to kind of become more important. Yeah. I'm not so sure of that. I was going to say, like, if you want to, like, I would do the final and bet the two tests. <laughs> <laughs> no, at best, I would I would make you tr or try to see if you can come to my other final. Yeah. So I have one student who's coming to my other final to take the test. Yeah, um, I can do the final and have that cover it. If you're okay yeah, so I could, <laughs> since I'm doing that for him, I could, whichever way would work better. I'd rather yeah. just do the final. Okay. And okay. That kind of everything. Yeah. All right. Less baskets to keep track of. Yeah. yeah. I already have three other classes of baskets to keep track of. <laughs> yeah, you don't want one class to have multiple baskets, that would suck. Definitely is like I am um, and I have public speaking class and I have a speech that I was out of state and it needed at it. So it's like I'm gonna do my final speech and then after class it's like office hours and I'm gonna do another speech there. So it's like that's gonna be a little tedious because I'm gonna need to memorize two speeches. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. So have you been uh, in competition for the debate or what? No? Okay. It's just like class. Just uh, class. So, okay. okay. I'll see you in five more days. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. What does that P mean? The P95 up there. It's capital P with a little 95. What the heck does that mean? Well, that's really like, dude, I'm the one asking you this. Say again. 95th percentile. What does it mean to be in the 95th percentile specifically? What exactly does that mean to be if you're in the 95th percentile? Yeah, 95% is below you, so it's got to be up here, right? Can you find the z-score for that? So I want a z-score that's got 95% below it. Can you look that up in the z-score chart? So in this case, I don't know the z-score, but I know the area, so you're going to look in the body of the chart. Right, so this that 0.95 is not a z-score, it's an area. So just get as close as you can to 0.95, and I'll give you a little clue. It's going to be one of those asterisk dudes, right? So it's the close you can get to 0.95. Yeah, I need to follow this guy who put in different answers to the question. Um, so what do you do with that? Well, what this really wants to know is what's the amount of money somebody could spend to be in the 95th percentile? So you need to figure out an amount of money, which is X. So this is when this formula is used. When I know the Z-score, but I want to know what the actual raw score is. In this case, the money. So you looked up... Um, 1.645, so there'd be the mean plus 1.645 standard deviation. So kind of, I really want this to make sense. You have to go 1.645 steps up to have 95% below you. So then if I go 1.645 steps up 
from the mean, I'll end up at the right money amount. And this is the formula that tells you what a z-score is. It's the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. Oh, I do. So I kind of see you. Can I also get the chi squared sheet? Yeah. The distribution? Yeah. Did you get this too? No, no, no. This has like an example problem with that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. sample of men, so that's the sample mean. Oh. All females, so that's the population mean. And I'm testing the claim that the males and females are the same. So I'm testing the claim that the males had a mean of 290.6. Oh, okay. Now it's, I agree with you, this word is a little weird because the yeah, original it's... problem was a problem from section 10-2. Oh, okay. And I should have just made a new problem, but I tried to like rewrite it to be from I chapter 9. Yeah, it's definitely worded strangely, I apologize. Oh. <laughs> Awesomacious. Yes, but then you say may, um, because the idea is, I, I know that they're related, mm -hmm. but I don't know if one causes the other one vice versa or whatever. So if you're more related, uh, not necessarily, because this test doesn't test for what causes what. It just tests for a few things are related, right? So the quick answer would be correlation does not mean causation. So if two things are correlated, it does not mean that one causes the other or vice versa. They could both be affected by some third variable I'm not even looking at. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's just the quick way to say that would be something like, this is a test for if you're related, not which one causes the other one. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was like, you want a little bit more than just to say, I don't know. But, but basically, I don't know is the right answer. Yeah.
then that would have been weak close. Because it just barely beat the minimum. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's telling us that our like, distance is just strong? Yeah, the correlation is a strong negative correlation. And then we can trust the line to make predictions. Yeah. 